check out one of my audio books, ebooks, paperbacks down in the description below. A bouncy castle flew in the air, 30 feet in the air, and killed five kids in Australia. This kind of thing has happened before, where the, the bouncy castle goes up in the air by itself with no one inside, or with kids inside it. So as a parent, man, if you look at the news, the weather, it's going to be windy, don't even do it. I wouldn't do it. Just cancel the bouncy, um, you know, part of the party. And if you do decide to do it, man, just make sure it's nailed down real well. Yeah, maybe they should have on like straps or something at the top. Have them, you know, like a seat belt. They can still run around and bounce around, but if things go wrong, they won't come out of it. They won't come out of the entrance of it if they're in the air. But yeah, you could imagine being one of the the parents, man. I'm pretty sure they, they actually saw them fall out in the air, you know? Maybe. Or teachers saw, saw them because I think it was uh, during school. But yeah, let's go ahead and check out the full report. All five children killed in a bouncy castle tragedy outside their Australian school were identified as police began investigating if the giant inflatable was properly secured to the ground. The dead victims were all 5th and 6th graders at Hillcrest Primary School who died after plunging about 30 feet from the bouncy castle that was whipped into the air by a gust of wind on Thursday. Addison Stewart, 11, and Zane Meller, 12, had been identified as two of the victims in the freak accident that took place during a celebration of the last week of classes before Christmas break in Devonport, Northern Tasmania. Addison Stewart, a sixth grader, was one of the five children identified in the tragedy. GoFundMe Zane Gardam was also a sixth grader. A GoFundMe page created in his honor raised over $35,000. GoFundMe police later said Jai Sheehan, Jalela Jane Marie Jones and Peter Dot, all of whom were 12, also died. Three children remained in critical condition and one other child was discharged from the hospital, authorities said. Tasmania Police Commissioner Darren Hine said that investigators will probe whether the bouncy castle was tethered to the ground. A four-year-old boy who was just trying to pet a puppy got his arm ripped off by a pit bull. I mean, from the shoulder on down, the whole arm just came off. Now, you've heard these stories before. It ain't the first time. And then um, people on Twitter are talking about, oh, it's the, uh, the owners, right? Because pit bulls. They're not naturally aggressive. Now, some of y'all might agree or disagree, but hell no. Nah. Pit bulls, they're one of the only dogs that attack like that. No matter how you treat them. You treat them real nice, they'll still attack. You can't, you can't predict it. And I said, when was the last time you heard of a golden retriever ripping off someone's arm you know most dogs don't but pit bulls they do man so if you're an owner of a pit bull or you know someone who is you got to be extra careful especially around kids but yeah he's gonna recover they try to uh, reattach the arm but they couldn't do it probably uh too damaged I think one of the dogs was chewing on it. When the police got there to investigate, they found one of the dogs chewing on the arm. So I, I probably made it impossible to put back, to reattach. But yeah, man, let's go ahead and uh, check out the full report. A pit bull ripped off the arm of a four-year-old Oklahoma boy after he tried to pet one of the dog's puppies, police said. 
Axel Foster was being watched by his grandparents in Tecumseh during a Friday night mauling. Officer Aaron McCormick arrived at the gruesome scene, finding the boy and his grandmother in the driveway. He applied a tourniquet to the boy and said he quote, could see the arm inside the dog pen and one of the puppies chewing on it. Other officers and animal control arrived and to assist with the aggressive dogs. The dog who tore off the boy's arm had to be put down, police said. Police Chief J.R. Kidney said the boy was transferred to a trauma center where he underwent several surgeries. Kidney said that the boy's grandparents have no history of neglect and charges against them have been ruled out. Foster's grandfather said that he is still recovering in the hospital. Another black serial killer. I remember a long time ago, man, it was just white guys that did this. I guess now everybody's doing it. But yeah, this guy is one sick bastard, man, for real. He would um, meet women online, take them to a motel, kill them, and then stuff them in a shopping cart. That's why they call him the, sh uh, the shopping cart serial killer. You know what's crazy to me is that the majority of serial killers are in the United States of America. I wonder why, man. You know, what makes this country create so many serial killers, you know, throughout like decades, man. It's been like going on for a long time. Other countries have had them, but not as many. Yeah, it's a sad story, man, but let's go ahead and check out the full report. Authorities in Virginia say a sick evil bastard they have dubbed the chopping cart killer is in custody after linking him to the bodies of several women found dead across the state. At a press conference, Fairfax County Police Chief Kevin Davis said the suspect, identified as 35-year-old Anthony Robinson, is believed to have met his victims on online dating sites. Davis said Robinson would arrange meetings with the women and then take them to motels where he would kill them and dispose of their remains in shopping carts. Davis said the suspect left a gruesome trail of murder as far south as Harrisonburg, Virginia where two victims identified as 54-year-old Elizabeth Redmond and 39-year-old Tanita Laurie Smith were discovered dead in a lot on November 2021. Investigators discovered a container near the Moon Inn Hotel in an isolated wooded area along the Alexandria section of Fairfax County. Inside the container were the remains of two more possible victims. Officers tentatively identified one of the victims as 29-year-old Cheyenne Brown who had gone missing from Southeast D.C. in September. Detectives say Robinson had been in contact with Brown and had been communicating with her through a dating website. 